Hello YouTube friends! Today I'm reacting to food theories what to eat after a nuclear fallout. This should be a really interesting one because up front, just gonna say, I couldn't tell you. So let's dive in! We're running low on supplies. Looks like I'll have to forage for food. Aha! Are you sure you should be eating that? Ugh. I know it looks weird, but honestly it just tastes like radioactive chicken. Matthew, it is radioactive chicken. <laughs> Oh, sorry about your leg. Eh, don't worry about it. I got plenty. I'll come clean right off the bat. Today's episode was inspired by a video game. More specifically, it was inspired by the cooking mechanic within that video game. See, in Fallout 4, there's this really unique food situation at play that I can't really stop thinking about. You're living in the wake of nuclear war and you have to feed yourself. Basically, the game lets you take all the radioactive food and completely remove the radiation from it by cooking it over an open flame. Raw rad rat meat? That's gonna hit you with two rads of radiation. But a cooked rad rat meat steak? Now you're good to go with no problem problems whatsoever. Such is the power of cooking. Obviously, that's not how radioactivity works, or is it? See, that's what got me theorizing on this topic today. I realize that there are plenty of resources out there that discuss prepping for the apocalypse, but as far as for the post-apocalypse, well, not so much. What happens when your shelves of canned peaches and corn run out? What food, if any, would actually be safe to eat in a radioactive post-nuclear fallout wasteland? How would a real-life soul survivor go about preparing a square their meal while minimizing their radiation exposure. Cause I don't know about you, but here in 2020 where every day it feels like we're inching closer and closer to the end of days, this is the stuff that I really want to know about. So today we're exploring this explosive topic food theory style and vaulting right in. So how harmful is radiation? Turns out you have to be kind of specific when you ask this question, cause there are a lot of different kinds of radiation. Broadly speaking, they can be separated into two categories, ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. Putting it in simpler terms, you can think about these as high energy radiation or low energy radiation, or in even simpler terms, dangerous radiation and safe radiation. The basic idea here is that radiation travels in waves, and if that wave is carrying enough energy, it can cause damage on the molecular level. On the other hand, if it's low energy, non-ionizing radiation, the radiation isn't going to be able to cause any sort of molecular damage. Safe kinds of radiation in And fun fact, radiation is actually used in food processing quite frequently in order to kill the microbes. And they're using strong enough radiation in order to kill these organisms, so they're trying to burst their cells. But it's actually still safe to eat these foods because although the radiation is strong enough to kill the microbial cells, it's not strong enough to penetrate the food cells. Ionizing radiation though is a different story, and that's the kind of dangerous radiation that you'd be worried about in a post-nuclear fallout world. It's associated with radiation sickness, which includes all kinds of nasty things like nausea and vomiting in the short term, and infections and bleeding and dehydration several days to weeks out. Radiation sickness can hit you fast and it can hit you long. You could be displaying symptoms within a single hour, and those could last for several months. It can be fatal in the short term, and even if you manage to survive the short-term effects, you'll be at an increased risk of leukemia and other particularly deadly kinds of cancer. So suffice it to say, ionizing radiation is not the kind of thing that you want to be messing with, and it is definitely not the kind of thing that you want to be consuming into your body. So you might assume then that ionizing radiation bad means that food hit by ionizing radiation is also bad, but that's not exactly true. What you really want to avoid is ionizing radiation hitting you. See, any object- Yeah, so I was just about to go there because, as I explained, radiation is used to make food safer for us to consume, actually. So I'm not sure really what the effect would be on all foods. I don't know if that's even been studied. But the effect that really is harmful is when radiation hits your body because that's when it can actually penetrate your cells and cause havoc on your body, not necessarily when you ingest a food that has been hit by ionizing radiation, which then would, like, it doesn't convert into anything that would then be harmful to ingest, as far as I'm aware. 
So let's see what else he's got to say about this. It emits radiation is said to be radioactive, and any object or person that gets hit by radiation is said to be irradiated. Take sunlight, for example. The sun produces radiation that's strong enough to cause sunburns to our skin, but objects like beach sand or sunglasses that have been left out in the sun don't cause sunburn. So here's the takeaway here. Objects that have been hit by radiation are irradiated, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're dangerous. The ones you have to look out for are the ones that are emitting their own radiation. The one so when something is radioactive, it's very unstable. It's breaking down into compounds that are unstable. And this chemical action and radioactivity itself is what causes in our own bodies things to split and divide. But that doesn't mean that if you come into contact with something radioactive, you're going to get cancer. So as I was saying earlier, the radiation we use on food, it doesn't actually affect your body because if you were like with the food as the radiation is hitting the food, then yeah, it's gonna hit you too and that's gonna affect your body. But eating the food after the fact doesn't have the same effect as being hit by the radiation in the first place. So to give an example of this, it's like expecting something that's been on the beach all day in the hot sun to give you a sunburn if you pick it up. And obviously that's not how it works because picking that up, although it's been exposed to the sun rays all day, doesn't expose you to the sun rays all day. And that sun exposure is what gives you the sunburn in the first place ones that are themselves radioactive. Radioactive food is going to be bad for all the reasons you would imagine it to be bad. If just being close enough to radioactive material is enough to do damage to your body, you can imagine it's going to be a lot worse when that radioactive material is sitting there in your stomach. Irradiated food, on the other hand, is actually totally safe to eat. Eating food that's been hit by radiation, even the high energy, dangerous ionizing radiation, is actually shockingly common. In fact, if you live in the United States, you've probably eaten food that's been hit by ionizing radiation radiation, not as a form of accidental contamination or anything, but as a way to intentionally make that food safer to eat. That same ionizing radiation that turns out to be so dangerous to humans is also dangerous to the organisms that cause foodborne illnesses. You've probably heard of salmonella and E. coli, things like that. Those are names of specific bacteria, and bacteria are living organisms that can be killed by ionizing radiation. You can literally kill the bacteria that's on the food by blasting the food with radiation. The same is true of insects and all sorts of other little critters that might threaten the shelf life of food. Irradiation can be a great way to sterilize foods and allow them to be stored for years without refrigeration. And this is something that's already in widespread use across the real world. If you see this symbol on a food product, it means that it was treated using radiation. Now, that seems like it might be scary, right? But if you're freaking out about it, remember, we're not talking about radioactive food, we're talking about irradiated food, which is not radioactive. You're not gonna be sprouting a third limb from spending too much time in the produce aisle at your local grocery store because because even though you might be surrounded by fruit that was irradiated, you yourself are not being exposed to the radiation, even if the food was. What you do have to be concerned about, though, is direct contact with radioactive material. Say a plant was carried through a radioactive area and got radioactive material stuck to its leaves. Well, then you could be exposed to that radioactive material as a result of eating or coming into contact with the plant, or more specifically, the debris that the plant tracked with it. If you think the idea of radioactive material accidentally getting onto the food sounds implausible, well, think again. The game that got me started on this whole episode, Fallout, gets its name from the concept of nuclear fallout. The basic idea is that after a nuclear blast, residual radioactive material gets propelled into the upper atmosphere and then falls out of the sky after the initial explosion, covering the landscape with radioactive dust and ash. And these tiny particles- Which, that's kind of what I was trying to talk about with my explanation of radioactive material earlier. Because when you have a chemical, for instance, that's radioactive, it has a known half-life, which at the end of that lifespan, it's breaking down into different chemical components, which are also radioactive, and it continues to break down. So you could, in theory, have radioactive debris that's continuously breaking down and radioactive. This is a super interesting concept because if you did have some sort of like radioactive ash fall all over the earth, that would more than likely, I think, get into plants pretty easily through the soil. And this is making me think, oh my gosh, <laughs> like honestly, I don't even know if we know really what would happen 
if plants did uptake radioactive ash. Of radioactive dust and ash can become a big problem. Some bits of radioactive material are so small that they can slip into the crevices in your individual hairs. Yeah, your hairs have small crevices so tiny you probably can't see them, and radioactive dust can be even smaller than that. Pro tip, by the way, if you find yourself wanting to wash radioactive dust out of your hair, better bet, just shave off your head. You're not gonna be able to get it all. Hopefully your hair grows back. And unfortunately, that radioactive fallout is the stuff that you have to worry about in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Small radioactive bits that are so small, you're probably not gonna see them. That radioactive fallout gets blasted into the air when the bombs go down, and when it comes down, it's gonna cover everything. That's why you really, really wanna be in your underground bunker when the bombs go off. Even if the blast isn't close to you, you could be in danger just from the stuff that's in the air. So keep the doors locked tight until the dust literally settles. So that's probably the biggest issue for a sole survivor looking to eat and survive in the long term. If nuclear fallout has rained down onto the soil itself, how on earth are you supposed to farm and get food? For an answer, we turn to the real world, specifically Chernobyl, the site of the infamous 1986 nuclear accident that left over 39,000 square miles contaminated with nuclear fallout. The good news, plenty of plants have had success growing in the radioactive soil. Besides natural vegetation like trees and grass, brassicas was successfully grown in the soil as well. And if you think that brassicas sounds like it might be a relative of the broccoli family, yeah, you're right. I suppose it would be more accurate to say that broccoli is a part of the brassicas genus, along with things like cabbage, kale, cauliflower, brussels sprouts, basically anything and everything you hated to eat when you were a kid, and maybe st- As horrible as this event was, I'm really kind of glad that we also have data on what would happen in the case of, like, a nuclear fallout. I don't even know what else to say. Like, I'm so intrigued because I've never thought about this before. Bill <laughs> as an adult now. If you hate that stuff, well, hashtag blame Brassicus. But here's the bad news, friends. Scientists tested the plants that were grown in the radioactive soil and found that the plants contained radioactive isotopes. So you could grow crops like broccoli and cabbage in radioactive soil, but you're not gonna be able to eat them unless you wanna get radiation sickness. Now, you might be asking yourself, wait, how- That was my guess, which- in that case, if you had, like, a greenhouse that's potentially extremely closed off from the outside, you could, you could continue growing in a greenhouse. And, like, the vaults that have seeds from everywhere, you could at least have seeds that are protected from outside sources. If we did the same thing with soil, potentially just extremely nutrient-rich soil, we could have a fault in case of a nuclear fallout that would prepare us 100% for growing non-radioactive produce if, you know, hellfire was raining down. <laughs> we could potentially have a safeguarded vault that would actually secure all the world's produce in the case of a nuclear fallout like this. That would be pretty cool. Was it that the crops themselves became radioactive? I thought we established earlier that food exposed to radiation was safe to eat. Well, the big difference here is that the plants aren't just irradiated, they actually become radioactive via absorption. As it turns out, plants can absorb radioactive particles in the soil in exactly the same way that they absorb nutrients and minerals from the soil. According to Dr. Michael Blaylock, who works as a- I really thought I would have nothing to say in this video because honestly the idea of nuclear anything still intimidates me but I'm glad I actually have understood what's going on and had input but yeah I am kind of wanting to make a vault now or expand the vault that already exists with all of our seeds should we make an expanded vault like is this is this something we should legitimately do let me know in the comments below soil scientist, quote, radioisotopes mimic some of the nutrients that the plants take up normally. And so the plant really doesn't distinguish between those radioactive isotopes. Oh my gosh, that's what I was going to say earlier, actually. Because, honestly, they're, they're so similar to the non-radioactive isotopes. They're just about the same weight. They're just about the same everything that chemically as a plant or really as anything you wouldn't recognize the difference you would have to be studying it for is this radioactive in order to actually determine that which obviously plants don't have that technology built into them they're just trying to survive and they haven't evolved to the point where they recognize 
a radioactive isotope versus the minerals that they need to absorb to survive and thrive. This is blowing my mind just to think about even though it totally makes sense. And some of the nutrients like potassium and calcium. So that's some pretty bad news for our farming project. Another piece of bad news is that the radioactivity in the plants that are growing in the radioactive soil can also affect the animals that eat those plants and the predators that then eat those animals. And yes, that includes us humans. Remember how plants weren't really great at distinguishing between radioactive isotopes and legit nutrients? Well, animals' bodies aren't too great at it either. In many parts of Norway affected by the Chernobyl disaster, all animals have to be tested for radiation before they can be slaughtered and safely processed for human consumption. This isn't just something that happened back in the 80s and 90s either. Even to this day, more than three decades later, there are still 37 Norwegian municipalities that have to test the animals for radiation before eating them. So if you decide to start raising cattle in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, you have gotta be careful about what you're feeding them. Make sure your grass-fed beef isn't grazing on grass that was grown in radioactive soil. So if we can't grow crops in radioactive soil or eat animals that have eaten said crops, how the heck are we supposed to get any sort of food? Is it hopeless? No, actually. The answer might seem kind of boring, but the solution is simple. Scrape away the contaminated soil. See, when the radioactive fallout settles, it's gonna fall on the topsoil. Topsoil, as you can imagine from the meaning of the words top and soil, is the upper outermost layer of soil, which is usually 5 to 10 inches thick. Scrape that away Way, very carefully so as to not allow the contaminants to seep any deeper and you've got yourself suddenly non-contaminated soil underneath. This boring solution of just scraping off the layer of topsoil to get rid of the contamination is exactly what was done in Japan following the Fukushima power plant disaster of 2011. It was certainly no small task with the amount of topsoil being removed weighing in at millions of tons. So you're gonna have to find a place to put all of that contaminated soil but once you've got it all out of the way literally you've got yourself the basis for farming crops. So as a review. Okay, but also where do you put that soil? Just a curious question. And also I feel like my vault idea was yes over the top, but way more exciting. Come on. And okay, like the logistics of really scraping off the soil everywhere feels like kind of crazy. I suppose it is the easiest solution that would work, but then I don't understand what you would do with that soil anyway. Granted, it's probably also better to actually contain it somewhere and have that confined as opposed to just continuously laying there. So I feel like that is actually a pretty good solution even though it is far more boring than having a safety vault. Here's what is and isn't safe to eat in a post-apocalypse. One, food that was produced before the fallout. Even if it was exposed to radiation, it's safe to eat. Just make sure to wash off any potentially radioactive fallout dust that might be on it. And no, cooking radioactive food does not cause it to become unradioactive, despite what the cooking system in the fallout games would have you believe. Two, food that was grown after the bombs dropped is only safe to eat if you know for sure that it grew in non-contaminated soil. Plants grown in radioactive soil are going to contain those radioactive isotopes that you do not want in your belly. And finally, number three, you should probably give up on hunting wild animals, unless you can be very, very, very sure that those animals didn't eat any plants that grew in contaminated soil, which is basically impossible if the bombs are dropping everywhere. Once the word gets out that you have this amazing topsoil-free farm underway, you'll likely have plenty of dinner guests stopping by. There's no short shortage of ways to die in a lawless radioactive wasteland, but survival begins with a balanced radioactive free diet. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. So to sum up, you really do not need to fear your irradiated food. It makes it safer for you to eat actually because it helps us as food scientists make your food within reasonable safety limits as far as microorganisms are concerned. Consuming it is a lot like picking up a seashell on the beach and expecting it to give you a sunburn. But honestly, it feels a little lame that we don't need a vault. But I guess it's also good we can just scrape off the topsoil and put it somewhere. I also still want to know what we would do with all that soil. But thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe and notification bell because it helps us out a ton when you do. And I'll see you next time.